Today on Larry King Now, Girl Meets World stars Ben Savage and Danielle Fischel. A lot of the motivation for making the show was to address the issues and concerns that kids nowadays are going through. Being back in the spotlight is something that's still kind of new for me. I Especially had with all the social media. Now, yeah, I had world. grown very accustomed to my quiet little life in Orange County. <laughs> I think it's a, a, a much more uh, difficult and harsher world than we grew, grew up in. Um, not just from an acting standpoint, but from just a, being a public figure. Plus, their newest co-star, Rowan Blanchard. Well, you've filmed 21 episodes already, yes. right? How have you enjoyed it? It's been a blast. And you know, as we got more into the season, you could see all the kid cast like slowly easing up and the weeks just becoming easier and easier. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, the cast of Girl Meets World. Ben Savage, Danielle Fischel, known for their iconic roles as Topanga Lawrence and Corey Matthews on the smash 90s sitcom Boy Meets World. Danielle Fischel and Ben Savage are back again in the spin-off of that show that made them famous, aptly titled Girl Meets World. Danielle and Ben join us now to discuss the reprisal of their legendary characters, and later we'll meet Rowan Blanchard their on-screen daughter who puts the girl in Girl in the World. <laughs> and Girl Meets World premieres on June 27th at 9.45 p.m. Eastern Time on Disney Channel. Let me refresh it. What was, for those of us who were not nine years old at the time, right. what, what was Boy Meets World? Boy Meets World was uh, a sitcom that was formed in 93, and it was a coming-of-age story about a young character. Uh, Corey Matthews, and you. he was, that was me. <laughs> and uh, it was him exploring the world. And it was basically him taking on the world, and we were seeing it from the eyes of a young 13 year old boy. And um, the show started in 93, and Corey met his love interest very early on in the series. And, uh, and it she was, was how that old? was me, 12 as well, yeah. So this was a young teen romance. Yeah. It, it was, but it was really, it was a, an ensemble cast, and uh, it was on for seven years. And over the course of the seven years, we really just, you know, uh, formed this great bond with each other, and uh, things took off. Well, how did the show end? How, how long was it on, Boy Meets? It was on for seven years, so it ended in 2000. So you grew up with it. We, we did. did. I was 12 to 19 on the show. And so you were 13, 13 to, to 20. 20. Yeah. And it went off because? Seven years is a long run. <laughs> um, I think at, you know, by the time we hit the seventh season, we had kind of really, all of our characters had found, you know, they had, they had grown up. It was time for the show really just to move on. It wasn't on. a young teen show anymore. Exactly. So it was time for us to move on and become adults, and that's what we've been doing over the last 14 years that we've been off the air, and now we have the opportunity to show where we're at now, what okay. lives are like as adults. What have you been doing for 14 years? <laughs> well, I have done a few movies. I went to school later in life. I went to college at 27, graduated at 31, um, and that was really very important to me. Um, so I kind of just focused on other projects and focused on making myself a better person in my personal life. You got married? I got married last October, yes. And what have you been doing? Um, that's a good question. I went to <laughs> Stanford. Uh, immediately after uh, Boy Meets World ended. And uh, I think I was really protective of that time because I really, I hadn't been in a normal school environment my whole life. So I looked at Stanford as sort of my chance to be a normal kid for a while. What'd you major in? Political science. And uh, Stanford was great because just such incredible professors and just everyone there is a, a champion of something. Harvard of the West. Harvard mm -hmm. of the West. Um, but like my floor alone, it was like every single person, you'd go up to them and say, oh, well, what did you accomplish? Or what, did, what theory did you invent? Or, you know, across from me was the Texas state champion fencer. And then there was the national wrestling champion down the hall. So you didn't act those years? I didn't act. I really, I, I, I wanted to take that time to just sort of grow and be did a normal you go back kid. to acting? After Stanford, I moved back down to LA, started acting again, um, did a few pilots, did some independent movies, um, wrote a lot, produced some stuff, and uh, things happened. Now, who came up with the idea that Corey and Topanga will come back in a show called Girl Meets World? Who, who, whose idea was this, how to come about? 
I would say that the idea was formed collaboratively between uh, some folks at Disney Channel and our executive producer, Michael Jacobs, who or originally started Boy Meets World way back in 1993. And the idea would be you would be your same characters grown up. Right. Basically picking up where we left off in 2000. Corey and Topanga got married in, in 99, so when the show, the original show ended, we were already married and the season finale showed that we were moving to New York so that my character could, could pursue law school. And so the idea was 14 years later, where are they? Are they still in New York? Do they have a family? Do you expect the school? audience to be your nine-year-olds grown up or do you expect it to be a nine-year-old audience? I, th I think we're hoping for both. Yeah. Um, I think this show has mass appeal, or we're hoping it does. Um, because it was very popular, right? It was. And interesting about the show is that it got more popular once we went off the air. It, it had it found a great life in cable and reruns. Oh, so the kids and the have seen it. It's never been off the air in oh, 21 years. On Disney? Not uh, just on Disney. It ABC Family, uh, MTV2. MTV Two. It's it's run. So kids are aware of this show. They are, but I think for me and I, I know Danielle as well is that um, some of the most meaningful you know emails and messages and it, fan interactions have been people who come up to us and say you know I grew up with Boy Meets World and it meant so much to me and and I'm so excited because now I have a daughter who's five or six and I can't wait for her to watch Girl Meets World because now she can kind of grow up with the same memories. Your daughter on the show who we'll meet in a, little, in a while is 12, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can we expect any cameos from former castmates? A lot of legendary characters were on this show, right? Absolutely, yeah. Any we coming back? Yeah, we just finished our first season. We finished at the end of May. We did 21 episodes, and we were they're lucky all, enough. They're all done already. They're all yeah. done, the first season, yeah. So we were lucky enough to have Ryder Strong come back, who played Sean on the original show. He plays Sean in this show as well. People are going to be very excited to see him. Bill Daniels makes an appearance again as Mr. Feeney, who's just an iconic, you know yeah. iconic teacher. Um, we also got to see uh, Rusty, who played Alan Matthews, Betsy Randall, who played uh, Amy Matthews. So yeah, quite Lee Norris comes back as, as um, playing Minkus. Uh, we get a lot of really great people to come back, and if we get to continue on, we hope that more will return. Do you get recognized in public? You don't look like you look when you were 12. I hope not. Um, <laughs> I, I think Danielle could probably answer that better than I could, but I, I do get recognized a lot. Um, but I think we've been blessed. We have very supportive fans, and uh, it, it's usually a positive experience. And uh, I think a lot of people just say, I grew up watching you on TV, and I, I want to say hi. So yeah. it's, it's, it, it's a nice problem. We to get have. recognized separately, but we really get recognized together. When we come back, we'll chat about what life was like after Boy Meets World for these two. 90s sitcom legends. That's next, don't go away. We're back with Ben Savage and Danielle Fischel. Girl Meets World will premiere June 27th at 9.45, because it <laughs> follows a movie, and then regular time, 8.30 Eastern on the Disney Channel. What night of the week? Friday nights. Every good Friday night, good it's night. A good one. Good. What was it like for you being famous young? Um, I actually had a, a really normal experience. In the 90s, there wasn't social media, there wasn't any, you know, not a ton of paparazzi or anything really to deal with. And going to regular school was always really important to me. So on our hiatus weeks, I went back to my regular high school. I went to every high school football game. I went to every high school what dance. What high school did you go to? Calabasas High. Where'd you go? I went to Brentwood. Um, but again, we were kind of... It was an interesting high school experience because we were kind of in and out. You know, we did filmed. You tutors on set? We yeah. did, yeah. Excellent tutors. Isn't it tough when you're young and you have this glamorous life and then still have to go back and associate with the regular people? I think a our... A lot of young people who become actors have problems later. I agree. Um, I think that uh, that probably might go back mm. to the parents and the family and... Uh, I think that the people that were surrounding us on Boy Meets World, uh, the producers, the teachers, our parents, our families, were they, they were well aware of that. And uh, I think that they did everything they could to try and keep us as grounded as possible and just keep us having a normal upbringing. What did your dad do? He was in real estate in Chicago. And then uh, my brother got the Wonder Years, so my family moved from Chicago to Los Angeles. Because of him? Because of Fred. So the family relocated and you know, my dad started working out here. But they were grounded, right? I, they were. You know, I think they were, you know, very innocent, sweet uh, Midwesterners who, who, who got lucky and found themselves in extraordinary circumstances. How did your parents handle it? 
My parents were, they never really, I had to beg in order to have the opportunity to try to act. They didn't want me to do it. Um, and so anytime I showed any attitude, my mom's famous quote was, I will rip you out of this business so fast your head will spin. <laughs> because she, hated it. she didn't really want me. It was, it was something she let me do because it was something I wanted, but it wasn't important at all to her. And so I still had um, chores. I still earned an allowance. I had to make my bed every morning. I had to help her cook dinner every night. I had to what take care of the dogs. Your dad? My dad is a working professional, worked, um, he's actually the president of a medical company. Um, and so. Did he enjoy your working in the business? He, I can't say that he necessarily enjoyed it, but he doesn't have a problem with it. They were always very supportive. Didn't they like seeing you on the tube? Of course, and they're very proud of me. But um, I think there's sometimes there's you know a difference with with parents that um, really are doing it to so letting you do something because they want to support you versus have it like neither one of our parents got any personal fulfillment out of. Do you have brothers career. and sisters? I have a younger brother, Chris. Yeah. And does he work in the business? He or? does. He works behind the scenes. Yeah, he's a producer and an AD, and he kind of. He works on a bunch of different things. I hear you have a movie coming? I do, yeah, Boiling Pot. What is it movie about? Coming out. It's about racism. And it's uh, all based on a true story, uh, based on 2008 when President Obama was running for re-election. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a totally different role for me. Who do you play? I play Valerie Davis, a, um, a young, kind of naive white girl who's in an, um, a mixed relationship with somebody from a different culture and kind of naive to the racism that's around her. And mm. she makes some, you know, interesting choices. It's it's a movie that'll make you ask a lot of questions about yourself and the people around you. And and uh, yeah, it's when's it coming? Um, hopefully, sometime next year. We're submitting to festivals right now. Was there a rivalry between you and Fred? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I think uh, we were always very supportive of each other. And uh, he's how much older than you? Four and a half years. Um, on a, on a personal level, I think we were always at such different stages of our lives that it didn't, you know, he got his license, I was 11. I, I got my license, he was 21. I was 21, he was out. So <laughs> um, we were always at different stages, but on a professional level, I never felt that. I think we were always really genuinely excited for each other. And uh, Ben just recently directed an episode of Girl Meets World, I and did. it was very important to Fred that he was there to support Ben, and it was it was very sweet to see because we were in the middle of our tape night, and Fred arrived and didn't want anybody to pay any attention to him. He hung back. He just wanted to be there to watch That's Ben nice. shine. You want to do movies? Uh, I think I want to focus on directing. I think I want to focus on writing, producing, directing, and staying in the TV realm. I think that's that's my home, and that's where I'm comfortable. Now you've done 22 episodes. 21. 21. 21. Is it, what's it like being back in the swing again? Whew. Uh, do you want to answer it? Well, uh, for me personally, I absolutely love the work on set and the acting and working with the kids that we work with and being back on set with Ben every day. That's my favorite part. Being back in the spotlight is something that's still kind of new for me. I Especially had, with all the social media. Now, yeah, I had world. grown very accustomed to my quiet little life in Orange County. <laughs> and now it's not so quiet and yeah. I think it's a, a, a much more uh, difficult and harsher world than we grew, grew up in. Um, not just from an acting standpoint, but from just a, b being a public figure. Um, there's cameras that I'm sure you know very well. There's cameras everywhere you go, snapping pictures of you every time you turn around. No privacy. Right, mm -hmm. but it's it's something that we've grown accustomed to, and I, I think, as Danielle said, we're, we're slowly learning how to redo. Yeah. After the break, Danielle and Ben are gonna be joined by their on-screen daughter, also known as the girl from Girl Meets World. Rowan Blanchard, she'll be with us next. Joining us now is lovely Rowan Blanchard, who plays the role of Riley Matthews, the daughter of Corey and Topanga. How'd you get the part? Um, well, I originally auditioned for actually Sabrina Carpenter's role, uh, Maya. And, you know, I think when I auditioned for Maya, I mean, obviously it's an incredible character, but it wasn't a character that I could personally relate to. So uh, then Michael Jacobs, who's the creator of the show, Amboy Meets World, um, he had me come in and audition for Riley. And then I met Ben and Danielle, and it was a role that, you know, I think I instantly identified with. And Ben and Danielle, I really, I read with them. It was very easy. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever see the original Boy Meets World? I have, I've seen every single episode. Although she was born in 2001. Yeah. So she was born a year <laughs> after the show went off the air. But um, it's still in reruns, so I've seen you it. You watch yes. them in reruns, yes. 
Well, you've filmed 21 episodes already, yes. right? How have you enjoyed it? It's been a blast, and you know, um, coming into it, obviously I was a little bit nervous because you know, you're coming into these group of people who have already worked together before, um, but Ben and Danielle and you know, our crew and our writers really made it a really welcoming environment. And I think, you know, as we got more into the season, you could see all the kid cast like slowly easing up and the weeks just becoming easier and easier. So he was Boy Meets World. I was. Now you are <laughs> the Girl Meets World. So you're the Corey now. I am the Corey. <laughs> was that tough to live up to? Um, you know, we're different characters. And, you know, while he does play my dad, it's not like I'm living up to Corey, I'm living up to Riley. Um, so I, you know, it's, while I do share the same characteristics as Corey, I am, it's Riley, you know? She's forming a whole yeah. new character. <laughs> With the changes in the world since that series, how is that brought into this series? I mean, social media in this series? As Danielle was saying, I mean, there definitely is a whole social media and, you know, kind of everything's public. There's that whole aspect, um, you know, and I, that does really affect middle schooler, especially, I mean, their lives. We did a, a particular episode where we did um, how technology has really affected, you know, children, and uh, that episode's very powerful. Um, but I wouldn't say, like, Riley's one of those kids that's glued to her phone. But if I could just add to what Rowan was saying, yeah. I think that a lot of the motivation for making the show was to address the issues and concerns mm -hmm. that kids nowadays are going through. Right. Boy Meets World, you know, Corey Matthews grew up in a much more innocent, um, naive world. And... Rowan's character, Riley, is growing up in a much more complicated world. It, it's a lot harder to be a kid nowadays than it was when my This is not a naive world. Let's, uh, let's watch a clip from uh, Girl Meets World. Ma! Ma! <laughs> Whatever this is, do not put me in the middle of the two people that I love equally. Just kidding. Come here, honey. <laughs> my teacher followed me home. Can we keep him? Can we keep him? Please say no. She walked out of my class. She's trying to be Maya. Why would you want to be Maya? She's cool. She has a wild side. She does what she wants. But you're such a good person. Who cares about that? <laughs> Do you really think I'm one of those girls who follows all of the rules and never gets into trouble? I was hoping. How did you start in this business? Um, I was five years old. And it was actually kind of by accident. Um, my dad was going in to re-sign with his uh, commercial agency, and they were like, well, we want to give your kid a try. So, and you know, I think it was something I had always been attracted to, just, you know, performing, whether it was, you know, holidays or, you know, school plays. It was always something where I... What did I, your dad do? Uh, my dad is... <laughs> both of my parents are yoga instructors, actually, but my dad had his share in the acting world. <laughs> How do you like working with a kid? I love it. Some people say, don't work. I know, no animals and no True. kids. Um, <laughs> no, I think Ben and I both, I won't speak for Ben, but I, we've discussed it amongst ourselves many times, um, being able to work with, she's the exact same age I was when I started. And seeing her and, and seeing her about to begin this journey, um, especially on a show and with a cast and a crew that I feel very comfortable with, that I know are good influences, I'm very happy for her. And I literally, I look forward to coming to work with her every single day. You're the teacher, right? I'm the teacher and the yeah. dad. Now, in the original, Mr. Feeney was the hard-nosed teacher, That right? was William Daniels. Are you a hard-nosed teacher? <laughs> I, I'm not. I think... Um, William Daniels was kind of the epitome of what a teacher should be on, on Boy Meets World. The, that character was just wonderful, wise, um, and just, just he knew Caring. everything. He had all the answers. Yeah. Corey, as a teacher, doesn't have the answers. <laughs> but he's figuring it out, and I think he's doing the best that he can. And I, I think that that's something that people our age, my, myself and Danielle's age, you know, young 30s, 30-ish, um, <laughs> they're slowly figuring it out. They obviously don't have all the answers, but they're doing the best they can. Since you went through it yourself, are you working well with the young people? We are. I, I mean, think I will pat Ben and I both on the back and say um, that we are pretty good with working with them. I know what it was like to be her age and to feel the amount of pressure, and Ben certainly knows it even better than I do because he was the boy. Um, and I also know that we're not, you know, we ha we're supposed to be, we're making a television show. We are supposed to be having a good time. And every day, of course, there are challenges and it's a, it's a professional job, of course. But at the end of the day, we just want to have a good time together. And we think that that's going to come across on TV. How do you go to school and handle work? Um, well, actually, I have been in regular school up until this year where I started filming the series. 
Um, this, I mean, this program that I'm doing, it's it's very academic, which I like because, I mean, academics are my main goal. They come before acting. Um, but we have an incredible set teacher. Actually, he was the same teacher on Boy Meets World. So, I mean, he's definitely kind of been there, done that. So the that. tutor is there all the time? Yes. And I think we're kind of creatures of habit. Um, so we've done a lot on this new series to make it replicate and, and be as identical to Boy Meets World as possible. We've Good. hired the same crew, the same, a lot of the same people. Well, and the best of luck to you. Thank you. Uh, you have a sparkling personality. Thank you I so can, much. I can, I can tell already you're going to be a star. Thank you. <laughs> this is Elizabeth Taylor, Margaret O'Brien, somebody. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you've you. got it, prediction. Next, Danielle and Ben will take your social media questions and we'll play a little game of If You Only Knew. And don't forget, Girl Meets World premieres June 27th at 9.45 on Disney. We'll be right back. We're back now with uh, Ben Savage and Danielle Fischel, the stars of Girl Meets World. I really like that young lady. She's, she's really she's, great. She's got it. Love her. Whatever it is, she has it. We have some social media questions. Okay. Melissa Pazan via Twitter. What do you think regarding how children's teen shows have changed since Boy Meets World ended? Ooh. You want to answer that? Sure. Um, I mean, I think uh, there was a very special period of time in the 80s and 90s where the family sitcom was the thing to watch. Since that time, uh, I think it's unfortunate, but that reality TV has kind of taken over. And the the more reality TV there is, the I think the less and less people are interested in watching wholesome family programming. I think now there's been enough time away from it that people are starting to crave it, and I hope that with what we're doing, there's going to be a huge audience of people who want to watch it. Uh, G. Bluebell on Twitter says, Ben, you're amazing. Do you see yourself more towards directing in the future? That was Gene. Thank you. Um, G. Bluebell. I like G. Bluebell. Thank you. <laughs> um, Why do you like directing? Uh, you know what? I think that uh, it's a nice way to work with the actors, and it's, it's, it's interesting. I had a really great time doing it. and uh, You control I, freak. I don't know if I... <laughs> That's what directors are, right? Well, I think some of them, but I, <laughs> I think it's just something that... I, I've been around the business since I was six years old, and uh, I've seen a lot of things, and I've picked up a lot of tips from a lot of directors. And uh, I think it's something I, 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 I was excited to try and continue it doing. Flex is a new muscle. as When you've been acting your whole life, directing kind of just is, a, is flexing a new muscle. Matt Pearson, Facebook. What was your favorite moment on the set of Boy Meets World? And do you have any funny stories you can share? Do you, I, I would say, uh, do you have a favorite moment? I have plenty of favorite moments. It's very hard to, you know, pick. parse through seven years and pick your favorite. But I'll say the most memorable was our, our final scene on Boy Meets World. Uh, the four main cast members, Danielle, myself, and two others, were in the classroom with William Daniels. And he looked at us, and his final line was, I, I love you all, class dismissed. And dream, try, do good. But he said, I love you all, class dismissed. And I remember when they said cut, it was almost like someone was saying, you're no longer a kid anymore. You know, it was like moving on to the next stage of your life. Yeah. And I'll always remember you that. You remember that, too? Absolutely. Some quick question. Let's play a job of if you only knew. What was your first job ever? Uh, Sunbeam bread commercial uh, when I was about f six years old. You got a bread commercial? I, I got a series of them, and they won a Clio Award. In Chicago? In oh Chicago. Gosh. And I had you to remember stand, what you said? Uh, I had to be, uh, hold it and pretend the bread was a dinosaur. <laughs> dum -dum -dum -dum, and then I would eat it, and, and then I said the word extinction. Oh, my God. excited about it. First job, Danielle. I did a Mattel commercial, and it was for a doll where you pressed a button and her two front teeth came out. And my first line was, look, she's getting her first teeth. And I squealed on teeth. <laughs> wow. Well, so they're very prestigious. Yes. <laughs> I delivered groceries. <laughs> well, that's oh, good. Okay. Most embarrassing moment. In life or... Anywhere. I would say, for me, what growing up on TV uh, is not easy. When your voice is changing, <laughs> when you're going through puberty at 14, I just remember, I think it was our third or fourth season, we, we rapped, and we came back four months later, and my voice was a lot lower. <laughs> and I, the, the, the seeing all the writers and the producers again, and the, hey, you know, it, it wasn't easy. And there was, there was definitely a season there where there were some voice cracks. Favorite thing about working with Ben? 
My favorite thing about working with Ben is that we've developed a friendship that's lasted now 21 years. And I know no matter what the circumstances are, Ben always has my back. And I know that he knows that I always have his back. Were you close during the time the show was off? We weren't as close during the time off as we were certainly while we were on the show during the 90s and as we are now, but we kept in touch. It's, we never fell out of contact. Favorite thing about working with her? She's very passionate and she's very dedicated to her job. And I know that when she's on set, she is giving you 150% all the time. 90s fashion trend that would, you'd like to see come back. Oh, that I'd like to see come back. Oh my gosh, really none of them. I don't think I liked any of the, any of the 90s fashion trends. I had really horrible feathered bangs. I do not want to see those come back. I, I, I still don't know what fashion is. I'm, I'm just not that <laughs> hip. Funniest fan encounter. Uh, actually, my funniest fan encounter was um, during the 90s when Boy Meets World was on and I was walking through Universal City Walk and a guy kept giving me dirty looks over his shoulder because I was with a male friend and he spun around and said, what are you doing here? And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't understand, I'm just walking around. And he said, you just came back in the rain for Corey from Pittsburgh, I saw it, who is this? To my friend, he thought, <laughs> that what had just happened, what had just aired last week on the show was in so real life. Good and good an actress you are. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have a favorite episode? Uh, I, again, I, I think it's hard to kind of just pick one, but I, I think literally every episode is a special memory for okay. me. Okay. What's an episode of Girl Meets World that you can't wait for viewers to see? I can't wait for viewers to see Girl Meets 1961. Um, it's one of our, uh, we did like a kind of a flashback episode where the kids played their great grandparents. And um, I just think it's one of the best performances that the kids put out. I'm really excited about it. Favorite thing about the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. Hmm. It's where the original Boy Meets World was set, right? Great cheesesteaks. Absolutely. And the Phillies. <laughs> Do you have an onset nickname? Not that I know of, but they might call they me are. mother head behind my back. <laughs> Finally, dream co-star. Who would you like to work with? I'd love to work with Julia Roberts. Larry King. <laughs> what do you say? Hey. Come on. We'd love to have you. Give me a spot on the show you and got I'll it. come and do it. You just say when. You, you name it. it. I'll be there. I've, I've been 22 movies and a lot of TV We'd shows. love to have you. Love it. I'll come. Give me a, give me a figure out a part. We will do it. it. I will. We'll... You come on my show or something. We'll play, figure. Anyway, you got it. Right Perfect. Right. We'll call Michael Jacobs when we leave. Okay. Thanks to both. Thank of you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Danielle Fischel, Ben Savage, and Rowan Blanchard for joining us. And be sure to tune in to the premiere of Girl Meets World, June 27th, 9:45 Eastern, on Disney. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time.